How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good tidings, who publishes peace, who brings good tidings of good, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. Hark, your watchmen lift up their voice, together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places in Jerusalem. For the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. Here ends the reading of Isaiah. And in Hebrews chapter 1, 1 through 12, which can be found on pages 970 and 971 in the Pew Bible. Long ago, God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things, through whom he has also created with worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory, and the exact imprint of God's very being. And he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much a superior to angels as the name he has inherited in his most exalted than theirs. For which the angels did God ever say, you are my son. Today I have forgotten you. Or again, I will be his father and he will be my son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, Let all God's angels worship him. Of the angels, he says, He makes his angels winds and his servants flame of fire. But of the son, he says, You are a throne, O God is forever and ever. And the righteousness scepter is the scepter of your kingdom. You have loved righteousness and hated wickedness. Therefore God, your God, has anointed you with all the oil of gladness beyond your companions. And in the beginning, Lord, you founded the earth, and the heavens are the work of your hands. They will perish, but you will remain. They will wear out like clothing. Like a cloak, you will roll them up, and like clothing, they will be changed, but you are the same, and your years will never end. Here is the reading. And of course, the letter to the Hebrews always seems to get a little mucked up when we're trying to hear it, because it sounds like all of these wonderful changes are happening, but at the same time, there are things that we, we like, and we're worried about what happens when they change. But then we go back to the beginning, and we're reminded that it's all this cycle. And so we start with the poetry that opens up the Gospel according to St. John. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life. And the light was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God, whose name was John. He came for testimony to bear witness to the light that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness to the light. The true light that enlightens every man was coming into the world, he was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world knew him not. He came to his own home, and his own people received him not. But to all who received him, who believed in his name, he gave power to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of humankind, but of God. And the Word became flesh, and dwelt among us full of grace and truth, we have beheld his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father. For the word of God in Scripture, 
for the word of God among us, for the word of God within us. Let us pray. God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O oh God, our rock, our redeemer. Amen. So what does salvation look like? What exactly does it look like? Because we have all these stories of salvation coming into the world, of all things being made new. We have this whole new start of everything happening. And it's something that seems to have happened in the past. And yet, on December 21st, at 4.30 in the afternoon, about 200 people gathered at the footsteps of the State House here in Annapolis, Maryland, and held a memorial service for 26 homeless people who had died over the course of the year. Is that what salvation looks like? Probably not. What's, what about what's happening over in Aleppo? Is that what salvation looks like? Or cancer? Or disease? Or fear? of poverty, being one paycheck ahead, knowing that the vast, Ameri not the vast majority of Americans don't have enough in their savings account to cover the bills should they lose their job. Is that what salvation looks like? And yet, it seems to have already happened, right? It seems to have already come into the world. It seems to have already been there. So what happened? Where did it go? Where did it go from, or to, or how? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, all things were made through Him, and without Him not anything was made that was made. In Him was life, and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. I remind you, on this Christmas Day, that what salvation might mean is not that everything has all of a sudden become perfect, at least for each of us. That everything is still not exactly what it is, but it ends on that fifth verse. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. On this Christmas day, as we progressively lit the candles around there on the first Sunday in Advent, perhaps if you were here you may have noticed that half of them fell over and we lost at least Hope and no, we kept hope. It was peace and joy. I think we lost. <laughs> we were a little worried about the loss of peace and joy, but we we cemented them firmly in there. <laughs> the darkness will not overcome our candles. But now we have five candles lit. These five lights, seven in total, for the two that lie are that remain lit all year around. And we know that light is coming into the world, and it gets brighter, and it gets brighter, and it gets brighter. And what we're reminded of on Christmas Day is that that light keeps coming into the world. We tell this story every year, as people have done for over two thousand years. We keep telling almost two thousand years. We keep telling the story of light coming into the world. We keep telling the story of hope coming into the world. Why? Are we delusional? Should we stop telling it? Because it seems like there's still war. There's still disease. There is still famine. There is still poverty. There is still homelessness. Why do we keep telling this story? And it's because we know when we encounter what this is. We know when we encounter what the light of the world is when we encounter it, whether it be in the church or some holy moment that we find when we encounter another human being or some holy moment found there in the woods, in nature, or all of those places combined, 
coming together where we see the beauty of creation surprising us. That hope and love is present. Imagine yourself as a shepherd in ancient Palestine. Cold at night, sharing stories, trying to create new ones because you've told the same stories so many times you're bored to tears. <laughs> and though the story is one that we tell and perhaps scientifically we go, I don't know if it happened that way. But imagine a message that comes to you from across the hills and through that same night sky where you've named all of the stars and made so many constellations up that you can't come up with any more. Imagine the story of peace on earth and goodwill to all coming across in that drudgery. What do you do? What do you say? How do you react? Yeah, like that. <laughs> you stand up. You stand up, you clap your hands, and you make your way to that joy with everything that you are. You hurry to that place of hope and love, and you make your way to it, not because everything has all of a sudden become bright and light, you still have to travel through the darkness, and it still keeps coming. And the story does end extremely well, does it? We still have Good Friday. But we also have Easter Sunday. But for now, right now, at this moment, we tell that story of hope. And it kindles within our solar plexus, if you will, right within us, that strength, that resolve, that courage to go out into the world and find those children, metaphorically speaking, perhaps, where hope and light and love are present who bless us as much as we bless them. Because that's what you are. You are a blessing with two feet. And wherever you go, however you share this message, wherever you carry it with you, you share that blessing with the people around you. You are a blessing. And that's what those shepherds were. If you can imagine those shepherds coming into the, coming into the stable or wherever it was, it probably wasn't a stable behind an inn, it was inside a house, but nonetheless. Because the animals stayed inside houses back then, you knew that, right? Kept the place warm, it's, it's good use of heat for recycling. <laughs> Didn't smell great, but kept the place warm. But the animals, the shepherds come into this place, and their very adoration, they're very just focusing in on this person and the people who care for this new human being is itself a blessing. And sometimes that's enough. Sometimes just being that presence of hope and radiating that love out to one another is all you need. It's a blessing. So I thank you for being here on Christmas morning. I'm making your way here to be a blessing, to radiate that love and that hope out of yourselves to make this and show this as a community where love is celebrated, where we equip one another to go out and give that and share that with all the world. Because we've got a lot to do. There is a lot of darkness out there. It's, it is. There always has been. Sometimes it scares us more than others. But there's a lot of light in here. There's a lot of light in you. Let it shine.